My name is John Sackett. I am from Huslia, uh, which is a, a village up on the Cuyahoga River. Uh, Tim Wallace, uh, born 1941 in Fort Yukon, Alaska. My name is Melvin Charlie. I uh, was born in Nenana, Alaska, raised up in Mento. My name is Patrick Frank. I am originally from Holy Cross, Alaska. Yeah, hi. My name is uh, Michael Harper of Anchorage, Alaska. My name is Sam Dementiff. I was uh, born in Holy Cross. My name is Georgiana Lincoln. Uh, I'm originally from Rampart. Hello, my name is Sam Keto, and I'm here to chat about some history about my involvement with uh, the Fairbanks Native Association and uh, Doyon. So 41 years ago, that doesn't seem like 41 years, but it's been a lot of um, change. I've seen so many changes in that period of time. I got involved with Doyon basically through Tanana Cheese back in the 60s. I was hearing a lot about the uh, land claims effort. So I started attending the uh, Fairbanks Native Association meetings. All around the state, there was really an awakening of understanding of we need to be organized. Uh, during that period, I had become the president of Tanana Chiefs. We started young, uh, and the reason for that is that, that was, this was during the period of time when people uh, we're looking to people who are uh, educated uh, to understand what was happening in the world. Uh, things were moving so rapidly. Uh, there was changes happening in the state, changes occurring in Congress. Uh, these, these things happened uh, so that it affected everyone, uh, but especially people out in rural Alaska. They hired me as the executive director of the uh, Tanana Chiefs Conference, of which Johnny Sackett was uh, was the chairman and the president. And so I, I stayed there and worked out of uh, for, for well, on the land claims with uh, the Fairbanks Native Association and the Tanana Chiefs, and that went on until 1971. Uh, 71 was the establishment, the enactment of the Alaska Native Claim Settlement Act. Uh, claiming the uh, 44 million acres and almost a billion dollars in, in settlement money. And uh, so there was a big push. The initial board of Doyon was made up of the board of Taterna Chiefs. And we just came over and made up the uh, initial uh, Doy on board. One of the real dynamic uh, forces of, uh, of the initial board was Lucy Carlo. She was always uh, in the forefront of the communication that we had with uh, with the village and mostly on the river, you know, because uh, the Carlos uh, are well known. She just enjoyed uh, being on the board, putting together things, being active. She was very active with elderly people. But she was always really uh, incredible for working in the background and getting things done. Throughout the, uh, my time in Doyan Tana Chiefs, I've always appreciated her, her skill and uh, the way she networked. We didn't know much about corporations and stuff like that. We knew business, people had a lot of businesses, but you know, we didn't know what corporations were really are, you know, and, and frankly, in the early days, uh, most of us had little to no experience in, in business, and certainly not at the level of Doyon. At Doyon, uh, we did not have any money we had approximately 12 million acres of land to select. It was a tremendous uh, appeal, uh, thing to take on. Um, the responsibility was tremendous. 
We had negotiated boundaries with the other regional corporations, and so I, I recalled a, a lawsuit with Athna, you know, rather resolved that. And then the other one was uh, Willie Hensley came down with the entourage from Nana, and he was really. Uh, he was a statesman, you could tell that. He was used to going to Washington, D.C. and everything else. But it was such a good deal because, uh, you know, we're resolving uh, the differences of our land. We, we thought we had more of a land up north, and they thought they had more of a land down south. So we had to negotiate. Uh, and it was a good process, you know, amicable, and um, it worked out well in that aspect. We went to the villages and, and talked to them about, about what their land use was. It was the land department that outlined uh, the um, selection patterns that the use and occupancy and, and uh, we did some provided some information about minerals that may be available and but they eventually made the selections. It was really hard for us to say you know you've got so many acres so where we suggest that you look at lands that are valuable for future development. But we had to also look at what are the lands that are valuable to us for subsistence? And what are those areas that our people used uh, for hunting, trapping, uh, and our historical sites? Uh, we weren't put in that position before to think about those issues. Evaluating what type uh, of land did we want. Uh, we were looking at the uh, state selections, the federal uh, selections, the uh, navigable rivers, the definition, uh, access to our lands that we had selected. And, uh, and that, that took a lot of our time. There was nothing absolutely nothing in our backgrounds that gave us anything, uh, uh, any knowledge of how a profit corporation existed in this world. Uh, that's not anything that we had in the villages. That's not anything any of us had. But it was required uh, from the act. And as a requirement, it was our obligation to our shareholders to learn. When I think back in 76, we didn't have computers, so, and there was no fax, um, no copying machine that would, it was Xerox, so everything, it was just slow by, I, I don't know, how you would even compare how you get a document today versus how long it took back then. It was like uh, we got off the trap line and changed from your winter gear back into like a business suit and a Western mindset. It was totally mind boggling, you know. And all of a sudden, you know, even a thousand dollars to me was a lot of money. And right off the bat, we were dealing with uh, half a million dollars, you know, and said, it was just, it was uh, hard to grasp that. You know, we're making decisions on behalf of our people with that much money. In the beginning when I worked with John, his intent was to move the corporation quickly to profit. Tim was very aggressive and so was John. And they were, uh, in the back of their mind was, let's make some money for the corporation. And there was, lots of um, potential and lots of aggressive uh, moves on their part to try to get the corporation, not to try, but they were doing it. It's a humbling thing to see uh, Native people that you see in, in the villages and to see those young men moving in, in this type of uh, atmosphere was quite a thing. Over time, we have had a successful corporation, and that has been good. I know that it's difficult at times, and it's so easy to say, 
what the heck is this done for me, or how, can, how is this for any good for myself? Well, there were a lot of people that this corporation did help, and there were a lot of people that it can help. And um, I encourage people to run for the board. Make, try to make a difference. And uh, that, when you say try to make a difference, that just means, what does that mean? That means to think of ways to help each other. Education is the most critical thing that Doyon could push for our young people. And it is great to see uh, folks get involved in, in the culture, the dances, the language, to try to get the language reborn. Uh, and then to, to get as much schooling, I think that's the most critical thing. Uh, and then uh, to, to help your community, wherever that might be. The Dorian chartered a course for success, and there's a lot of opportunities for younger people, but it's just up to them, you know. Uh, and our traditional values is work ethics, good hard work ethics, and their ability of people come from a resilient people, no matter what kind of challenge it is. There are solutions if you focus on the solutions with other people. And you, know, you could use these, um, these uh, traditional values that they hand to us and still be su su successful in the business world. For the other people, it's your corporation. You have the obligation to learn about it, to take an interest in it. If you don't take an interest, it's your fault that it goes its direction whichever way that is. Uh, the young people get an education, you know, and uh, don't stop. Learn your culture, you'll have, you'll have time to learn your culture, but uh, you'll have time to get an education also. But uh, those two go hand in hand. If you have both, you'll be all right.